Hey, how's it going? Tim Warner here from techtrainertim.com. This lesson is on GitHub Advanced Security Certification. Particularly, I want to give you a candid exam review. I earned the cert just the other day. Why might you be interested in GitHub Advanced Security? If you don't know what GHAS means, you might not be in the right video. GHAS assumes that you've got at least intermediate experience with GitHub. So if you're not a developer, you're working in GitHub repos to some degree or another. Growing business demand for strong security practices is a pretty weak, to st weak way to state the obvious. Information security, what can we do if we're hosting our line of business applications, our proprietary source code in GitHub? How can we prevent bad stuff from happening, like our devs, not maliciously necessarily, but accidentally exposing API keys, secrets, having project dependencies fall out of date and emerge with zero-day vulnerabilities, having poor coding practices show up in your code base? What can GitHub Advanced Security do? Well, it's a bucket load of tools. And the certification validates your skills with these tools by the first party, by GitHub itself. You can look at my public gist I put together that encapsulates some related learning links. The short link for that or short URI for that is timw.info ghasreview, G-H-A-S-R-E-V-I-E-W. What are the essentials of the exam and the GitHub Advanced Security Certification? Costs $99 USD or your currency equivalent as of this recording in the very tail end of 2024. Your registration, you have to register through the defined gate at the GitHub website. I created a short link, timw.info slash register. You don't want to get hung up. You need to enable, you have to um, request that GitHub enable your ID which, by the way, can't be an enterprise-managed user. You have to have a regular GitHub user account. You have to enable that account for the exam. It's kind of a pain. The exam itself is very low to the ground and, and simple in structure. It's about 70 multiple-choice questions of the single-answer multiple-choice and multiple-answer multiple-choice varieties. 120 minutes is more than fair, given that there's no performance-based testing, there's no case studies. I don't remember what the pass mark is. It doesn't matter. It's a uh, three year. I think I have that on the slide. You get your badge from Credly, which is an excellent way to validate your competency. The certs are valid for three years. GitHub hasn't announced research requirements yet because it's still early days in the cert program being exposed to the general public. You can see it right, an example of my Credly badge. What's nice about these digital IT certification badges is that they can prevent fraud. If somebody, like you're interviewing for a job, and the job wants you to be certified and validate that you have the credential, Credly, this is what they do. They use blockchain, believe it or not, for verification, and you can share the public URL of your badge to validate your achievement. It's important. As far as preparation advice, this video is not a cert prep training, although I'm happy to provide. Here I want to give you just some really quick boots on the ground advice. Stay grounded in the certification study guide. They're really beautiful looking documents. I created, I put a link in that gist that I referenced at the beginning, and the screenshot shows the GitHub Copilot objective domain, but there's a similar document for GitHub Advanced Security. Also, in that document will be links to Microsoft Learn free training modules. I made a video course for Microsoft Press covering every single skill on the certification. Now, in terms of your own practice, I don't think you're going to pass the GHAS exam if you don't have intermediate experience with GitHub. It doesn't necessarily have to be enterprise business experience, but you're going to need to have access to GitHub Enterprise Cloud, GitHub Copilot Enterprise, and GitHub Advanced Security. GitHub Enterprise. GitHub Copilot's not strictly speaking required, but it's going to help and accelerate you even as you prep because you'll be able to use GitHub Copilot to create learning resources. For example, you could instruct GitHub Copilot, create a quick GitHub workflow that configures CodeQL analysis for my Node application. And what's even cooler about Copilot is you can say, 
create that file for this project that's actually loaded into my workspace, you know? So stay grounded, a lot of free resources here. Not a lot as far as practice tests. I would go to Udemy, but be very careful and vet the practice tests and ensure that they're not pirated brain dumps because you don't want to inadvertently use illegal content and run the risk of getting decertified, you know? We need to always stay clear, focused, and obey the candidate agreement by the vendor. Now, I'm here to give you candid value as somebody who teaches this material, somebody who has taken and cleared the certification. But again, as I just said, never leaking NDA or non-disclosure agreement info. Strengths of this certification. I say that not just this skill set, but all five of the certs that are extant as of late 2024 represent good, real-world, realistic skill sets that in my experience, and I've worked with company sizes in GitHub from one or two contributors to enterprises with hundreds of thousands of employees and potentially hundreds of contributors, thousands of contributors. Secondly, the strength is these GitHub certs are first party. So it's first party validation that you've spent some time using the technology. And to let the proverbial cat out of the bag, the three core services in GitHub Advanced Security are Dependabot, which does automatic dependency scanning and can potentially be configured to do security updates and version updates and file PRs and everything. A lot of really nice AI-driven automation. Secret scanning is the component that handles detecting, do you have an open AI key exposed anywhere across all your code bases? Is there a secret in plain text? Those sorts of things. Code scanning uses the code QL language environment and framework. I'm not sure exactly what to call CodeQL. It's a whole bunch of things. It's a SQL-like language, fundamentally, and a runtime environment that does static code scanning. It will actually build your app in, in addition to looking at it in various ways. And that's the reason why I'm kind of fumbling with my voice is I want to keep these videos tight. And in the past, I've gone on too long. I've got some more strengths, some more kudos. PSI is a really nice cert exam vendor. They allow you to take even more than one break. If you need a break just to reset or to do bio, you can do that. They've been an efficient exam registrar. Also, again, using Credly is a great idea because not only GitHub, but many vendors use Credly. So that way, regardless of where your career goes, as long as your certs are aligned with Credly, it's very easy to manage your badges and share them. Now, on the other hand, some room for improvement that I see. This feedback I offer to two parties. One, the GitHub certification team. I hope you're watching this. And I offer this in love and respect. And number two, for you examinees, this is also relevant because I want you to know you're not alone if you get hung up on some of these challenges. And I want to present some practical workarounds in case you see this on your GHAS exam. These questions I created have... They have to do with the subject matter, but they're not even what I would call practice questions, so please don't think that this is a study guide. Again, I just want to calibrate. The questions in the exam leave no margin for error in many cases. They're either you know it or you don't, and that's not really good. That's If you look at Bloom's taxonomy, that's too low. Microsoft doesn't do that. Cisco doesn't do that. You do need to have hands-on experience. And if you haven't spent time working with actions and code QL, you won't pass the exam. I'm almost certain of it. But it's also a problem because when you give questions that go into certain directions, like if we look at the bottom of this slide, let me whiteboard for a moment if you don't mind. To enable depend about security updates in a GitHub Enterprise Cloud repository, which of the following click paths is correct? And notice that this question is testing, do you know how to do a UI path? And it's not having anything to do with the subject matter. Worse, depending upon how the dev interacts with GitHub, GitHub Mobile, different browsers, it's trivia. And, and what it is, in my opinion, speaking as a 30-year veteran of IT certification, is that the folks, the language needs a serious overhaul and the folks need some training, the folks who write these questions. Now, the second bullet point, heavy emphasis on governance, particularly who can see what, given different visibilities and default settings, those, again, smell to me like parlor tricks to make a question artificially more difficult. There's no need to do that with this subject matter. 
Another set of challenges here. The GitHub exams, I've taken four of the five now. The last one is GitHub administration, and I plan to take that before the end of 2024. It's like each exam was written not only by a separate team of authors, but by a separate team of editors and publishers, too. There's no unified voice. This erodes trust, at least it does for this test taker. Now, focusing on keyword trivia misses the point of tech education. Language needs an overhaul. Let me, again, I'm not piling on here. This is all constructive. Is it important that you as the examinee know what YAML keyword does such and so? Yes, but... It's also something that they're going to pick up in practice. They get through IntelliSense. They get through suggestions via GitHub Copilot. And ultimately, there's the docs, which as a technical trainer is an, and as a solution architect, I always ground my learners and consulting clients in the first-party docs. This is going to cause people to lose points on the exam unnecessarily. So as an examinee, I want you to go into the exam with a weary skeptical eye, not negative, but breathe, take what's there, feel free to give polite constructive feedback in the exam or after the exam. Don't read into the questions. The exams, as you can see, are very to the point. So every word counts. And this is a case where a good practice exam, and at the moment I think Udemy is the only game in town finding a good provider there, is the best path for getting into the mode of answering these kinds of questions. And enough. <laughs> Next steps. This is for you if you're pondering taking GHAS and you're not sure where to start. Or you're going to take GHAS and you're wondering what comes next. Now, if you took the exam and were just bowled over by all the assumed knowledge with GitHub Enterprise Cloud, and you won't pass the exam if you aren't sharp on, on the whole GitHub object model from the, uh, you know, the Enterprise Cloud to the orgs to the repos, users, EMUs, users into orgs into teams, repos that are owned by individuals or orgs, implications in terms of code QL and reporting and alerting based on the above? Yeah, if you were blown away by that, then I would suggest you either practice and study and take the GitHub Foundation Cert, or you at least study the learning material in the study guide. If you felt the exam was just right, you were vibing with it, if you have a choice and willingness, I'd suggest you go for GitHub Actions next, given that, I mean, number one, GS is foundational on top of Actions. Another exam idea is for you to lean into GitHub Copilot. GitHub Copilot is evolving so rapidly. It's not going away. It would behoove you to get smart on it now. Well, I hope that you liked this lesson. I enjoy giving them. If you want to make your own Octocat, myoctocat.com, lovely community project at GitHub. And you can find me at techtrainertim.com. All the best. I look forward to connecting with you soon. See ya.